done with Lair. Yes. Uh, that must feel great to be at E3 and have a <laughs> finished game to show everyone. Yeah, absolutely. Three years of uh, work on it. Um, I was just chatting with the Heavenly Sword guys, and they actually have been working on it for four and a half years. So we, we didn't quite hit that, but even three years, it feels really good to finally finish Lair. And uh, yeah, I think we've, we've got a unique game, um, and everybody worked very hard to uh, eke out the last little glitches, and we're just absolutely proud um, that it's finally coming out. And I think it's a fantastic introduction to that whole stretch of games which are coming out uh, this Christmas for the PS3, and I think the PS3 really has the best lineup which you could wish for, um, and Lair is certainly part of it. Actually, we were looking the other day at, at the original two-pager, which was basically the original pitch which we made to Sony, and it's it's pretty amazing because all of the key elements were in there. So there were supposed to be dragons, huge battles with large armies. Our key distinguishing feature at the time wasn't actually motion control. That was pie in the sky. They will never put it into the controller, so I'll just dream about it. So we're here. But no, the biggest thing was to bring something new to dragon games because there's this dragon curse, which basically um, says that almost every single dragon game ever failed. And our assessment of why these previous games oftentimes have failed was because you never brought the dragons together. It was always about the fire combat. And we have that. Of course, Lair has, you can spew fire, you can shoot fireballs, you've got different sizes of fire, you can burn everything. But that's not the point. The main point is you get good at Lair once you get into close combat and once you actually get the dragons fighting directly against each other. This is whole visceral combat of the beasts against each other. And that was in that original pitch and I think it made it across in the final product really, really well. So I'm happy about that. After having played Lair, I, I feel that it's one of the games that really takes advantage of the six axes in a, in a good way and, and really makes it feel like a solid thing. How, how hard was it to work with the motion sensor and, and how much time did that take? Thanks for the compliment. <laughs> we spent a lot of time on it. Well, for, first of all, um, when we were doing um, Star Wars Rogue Leader for the GameCube, actually, we had an early prototype of that controller and that had motion control. So we thought for our style of gameplay, especially when it comes to flight, about motion control for a long time. So we we're kind of anticipating it. And I was always keeping it in the back of my head. Now, Nintendo kicked it out for the GameCube. With the PS3, it suddenly was back with a vengeance. And it was great because suddenly certain things made sense in terms of just the flight feeling. Because if you're in a craft like an, an X-Wing, then you want to have almost a very undynamic feeling. I mean, a craft doesn't fly very dynamically. It's, it's, it's very rigid, whereas a dragon is a living creature. So the motion control translated over really well. And once we had it down, you suddenly felt the flight of the dragon even better than before. On the stick, it was OK, but it never felt as good as on the motion control. What is tricky about it is the basic flight is done relatively easily. All of the other stuff, which you probably um, experienced when you played it, basically the bumping into other dragons, the gestures to do 180s and the dashing forward, things like that. That stuff is really hard. So the moment you try to get more sophisticated with the six-axis motion control, you really have to dig in deep. And if, if I can criticize from the point of view from a game which a lot of people say probably got it right, other people either try to put it into their game without it really fitting the game, and I wouldn't do that. Our best example in Lair is the ground controls. We had them on motion control and it was horrible. It was terrible. Worst thing ever. And we try to make it work, but at one point you simply have to realize, no, the ground controls really feel better on the analog stick. So don't force something which is meant for motion control onto motion control. On the other hand, if you decide, well, this thing really fits to motion control, then take your time with it. If you don't really dig deep enough into it and really try many, many focus groups, many, many different people, then it might not work for everybody. Would you want to do a sequel to the game? Well, the original two-page pitch, which we did those three years ago, was a little bit more elaborate than the final game. Um, yes, there was multiplayer in there, and we first had to figure out all of these different gameplay systems in single player. That's why we don't have multiplayer in the final game. Um, but there was a pretty elaborate scheme around multiplayer. There also was um, a little bit more freedom in certain directions. So we've got a pretty concrete plan of where we want to take the Lair franchise with the next iteration and to really open up the world and to go further. 
but for that, layer one needs to be a success. And I, I think we've got enough groundbreaking stuff in there that if people embrace it, that we can very easily then go forward and do something much larger with it, with it even. I heard something that you're working on a, on a downloadable title for PlayStation Network as well. Is that something you can talk about? I can't really talk about it yet, but in general, we're working on a lot of stuff, um, large but also small. And um, there's always this, this fatigue setting in with certain team members who basically say, look, I don't want to work on this really huge, massive, multi-million dollar game which takes three years, but I only want to want to do something small, a, a, a really small key idea, which can be a lot of fun. And PlayStation Network and the other network systems on the other consoles makes this possible for the first time, and we're pretty excited about it, yeah. When you're doing one of these platform transitions, um, just getting the technology up and running, um, and certainly with something as ambitious as Lair, it takes up a large amount of time. Now that we've got the basic building blocks, the Lego pieces in, in place, I think we could basically get to a sequel for the game, which would have a lot more features in there. Don't get me wrong, but we could get to it much, much, much quicker. The, the sweet spot really is the 18 to 24 month development cycle, and that's really what you can do once you've done that initial hurdle, this initial jump of getting everything back together on the system. So yeah, next time it won't take that long. Have you seen anything here at E3? Have you had any time to see any other game that you felt like, wow, this really captured my imagination? What blew me away again was Little Big Planet. Um, I'm just a huge fan of emerging gameplay. We've got very tiny little bit of that in the later levels in Lair, where basically the player can uh, have a little bit of that sandbox experience. Little Big Planet is all about it. And um, I think that's that sandbox experience and sharing your sandbox with other people on the network is actually where at least part of the game industry needs to go towards. There's always space for a lair or a heavenly sword where basically we tell a really good story, hopefully really good, but where we, where we tell a big elaborate story, like the movies but in an interactive uh, fashion. But that can't be the only thing. And the other big emerging thing is definitely user-generated content. So Little Big Planet is all for me. And then um, I'm, a, I'm a huge fan of Mario, so Mario Galaxy, actually. Mario Galaxy finally seems to be what Mario 64 needed as a sequel, where they really break new ground. So that's from the competition. That's my favorite game out there. I mean, they're even saying that themselves, sort of downplaying Mario Sunshine. <laughs> yes, look, Mario Sunshine and the whole water um, thing was gorgeous and fantastic for the first three levels, and then they just blew it, sorry, but they blew it after that. So, no, I mean, Galaxy really, really looks cool. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'd like to thank you for your time, and you can get back to the party. All right.